Hello, I'm uh, Richard Raff and I'm going to talk about ingrain hollowing um, using the back cut, back hollowing, uh, which is very fast. It was the only way I was taught when I started turning, so it's really the only one I use. Uh, but it is a bit tricky to learn. So I've got a series of short bits of wood um, and uh, we'll go through most of them, I expect. So here we are with a short bit of this is Green Box Elder, um, pre-turned as you can see, but it's gone into chuck, still needs truing up. So this is a half inch spindle gouge that we're going to be using for this. Tool starts on its side and then towards centre. What we're going to be doing, and we show you this first, and then uh, we'll explain what's happening. So the idea is just to get the guts out as quickly as possible. And then I usually finish it off with a scraper. This is a three, uh, one inch round nose. Not sure where all that vibration is coming from. And so that's interesting. It looks like your scraper angle was going up into the wood. Yes. Um, when you're the important thing with any kind of scraper angle is that the the uh, angle between the top of the tool and the wood you're cutting is less than 90 degrees. Um, so I can do that in there and I get a sheer cut. And you'll see it again when we come to do the scoop video. So the idea there is just to get the inside out as quickly as possible and then come in with a scraper and do whatever you want on the inside. So we'll get another block in and uh, then have a, a look at how that works. So these are about uh, 60 mil diameter, that's so about uh, two and a half inches or so. So the the tool itself needs to be, the one I was using was this and it wasn't working quite as well as I might have liked um, but the important thing is to have a full convex curve on the wing of the tool here <clears throat> and you need a fairly long bevel. Now on this gouge uh, I've uh, it's probably easier to see um, that often there's a corner here, a steep corner on the bevel, so I've just taken that away. It doesn't look very pretty, but I've got the basic um, bevel here, and then that, that lot's been cut away. Now this is a half inch um, spindle gouge, it's either Sorby or Henry Taylor, the name's worn off, not sure which. Um, the tool starts on its side and you want the rest high enough so that the point of the tool is at centre and I'll just mark centre in case you can't see it which is there so the the tool is on its side when the tool is at centre and when the point of the tool is at centre there so the idea is going to be you start off with the bevel riding here the tools on its side flute out get into the wood and then drop the handle to make an opening and then go back into the middle and then come out. Now it's important to keep this opening fairly narrow because you're going to be levering the tool off that. So the aim then is to find center and you'll feel where that is. If you look where it is you can't move the handle because your body's in the way. So it's another of things where you, you have to have to feel your way. You get the tool into the middle and then as it comes back, it rotates very slightly. You can't see a thing there. It rotates very slightly. And I'll get it there. So 
you can see you get a really nice fat shaving and that comes off in fact it's so thick you can hardly break it um, it comes off the whole of that part of the tool so it all looks the wrong way around but it works which is the main kind of thing now the things which can go wrong if you right the first one which happened to go wrong there was a <coughs> little kind of catch or something there so this opening here the rim now is rough you probably just hear it. So to true that up I'm going to hold the tool on the wrist and just raise the handle and that bit of the edge in that trues, trues that rim up and that means I've then got somewhere smooth to ride the, the tool. You get into the middle and then roll the tool so that you maintain an angle that's kind of 45 degrees to the wood as it's coming up and that's what slices the wood. If you don't rotate the handle, all you're doing is you've got the, the nose of the tool just butting up against the end grain it's not going to cut a thing. The other thing which is happening here because of, I've got the very wide opening is that uh, I'm running into trouble with the, uh, the tool up against the rest. It doesn't matter if I drop the handle or swing it back uh, I just don't have any room to move and this tool is getting a bit old anyway so I'm going to take that off and I'll just do it all again that's using the, the right wing So start with the tool on the rest, I can probably bring that round a little bit squarer. I can also bring it up a fraction this time, about two millimeters. Into the middle, drop the handle. I've got the opening. That's it. Now this time if I don't swing the handle at all, you can see it just doesn't cut at all. If I rotate the tool too fast, something I don't like to demonstrate, not with the lathe running anyway, if I rotate the tool too much then the wood very thoughtfully will pick the tool up, grab the edge, pull it up and then at the top up here, the tool's well off the rest, that disengages, you'll be pushing so it then does that three or four times a second and uh, it's um, Yes, it's, it's, a, it's a big cap. Get that out. Now having got the bulk out in two or three cuts, this little kind of triangle up in there, I can then take away by either just working on the edge and my hands acting as a kind of fulcrum, or I can raise the handle and ease the edge in. Now if you get to this stage, uh, we'll have a much more dramatic catch this time. Um, if you get to this stage and you're pushing too hard, what happens is that the force is all going out that way, and this is typically what happens. You get a, uh, well, you, you don't have an object left. Uh, you're going to start the project again. So we'll just get another bit of wood. In fact, before that, I can just turn this round and use the other end. Scott's background, we don't like to waste anything. Okay, so, screw it up first. On its side, into the middle, rotating very slightly just to get uh, anti clockwise, just to get a bit of a shaving then roll it away from me again again now what happens is that you're going to miss center you'll think you found center but you don't there's a cone in the middle there can you see that all right and you're inclined, instead of getting on center, you go down the far side. Whoa, yes, I'd forgotten, there's a hole <laughs> the other end. Um, 
you you slide down the cone on the bevel and the, you just get this little kind of spiky cone in the middle. Um, now if we do that cut as often happens with a um, uh, you have a depth hole first then that's going now this will probably need truing up again yep. very slightly out of whack so this time skew chisel skew chisels the um, the rest is up so I've got a more comfortable angle here right that just trues it up you need to get into a habit of truing everything up um, getting rid of everything you don't want in the final piece so up with the um, half inch bowl gouge again on its side just to it slightly anti-clockwise to get a bit of shaving I'm a fraction high this time so just squeeze that down a bit so uh, oh no, I was going to do this with a uh, get a depth drill so just do a starter hole for a depth drill and this is a uh, a quarter inch drill with a number of uh, marks drilled on it. Doesn't really matter how far I'm going to this one, but just to show you that if you've got a depth hole, um, then you don't have the problem with the little cone at the centre. You just you can do it into there, find the depth hole, and then come out again. But again, still keep the isn't it lovely. Um, just keep the opening fairly small. And then you can go back the way you came. But the moment you get a uh, any kind of little bit of a snick. Um, that means you've usually taken out more than enough and up inside here let's get rid of that this is now down to about three mil thick about an eighth of an inch so that's um, that really gets the bulk out in four or five seconds at the outside it's very fast and then to uh, and to, to smooth that up I'm going to do a round and I've got this one inch um, uh, scraper and I can look inside a bit it's probably best to bring the rest up very slightly again and there's another time where I tend not to look. I tend to be well over the tool and so I can feel where the centre is, drop the handle, just ease the pressure down with my elbow on the end of the handle and move smoothly away. And if you move smoothly away you should cut a nice smooth curve whether you want to or not. It just occurs. Um, and that's that. So even with all the messing around it probably hasn't taken um, uh, more than a couple of minutes. And that's about it for the ingrain hollowing. After that, it's all practice, and uh, you'll have bits flying everywhere. So, because you'll get the angle just wrong. So, don't have anything sticking out of a chuck more than about four inches. It's 100 millimeters. Um, there's just too much leverage. These are sharp jaws, so I've got a much better grip than you would have if you just had the standard kind of jaws which um, come with most chucks. Right, that's it, and you'll see this in action on the um, uh, on the scoop video, which we're about to make.